Hey everybody, this is Ryan from Aka Maple, and today I'm going to go through some tips and tricks in how to use the Octobrush in Splatoon. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the gear and abilities you can use. I want to highlight some movement options and attacking the best way to get splats. Lastly, I want to talk about the Beacons and Kraken, your sub and specials, and how to use those effectively as well. So to start off, I'm going to talk about some of the characteristics of the Octobrush. So the Octobrush is a roller class weapon, and unlike most roller class weapons, it paints a very thin spread of ink. So you're not going to be painting effectively rolling, but rather by flicking continuously. Specifically for the Octobrush, it has a wider range of attack than the ink brush, and this can really help in getting some solid splats. The brushes are a unique type of roller weapon. Currently, there's an ink brush and octo brush, as well as a nouveau custom of each. Because of its mobility, the octo brush is very useful in getting flanks and ambushes on the opponent. And with its beacons, you can get into the enemy base and let your teammates in as well too. It's a really unique weapon, and I fully recommend giving it a try. So if you've decided to use the octo brush, you're going to need to make sure you have the right gear and abilities. There's a few abilities that I think are essential, and a few others that differ depending on your playstyle. So I'll just kind of go through the things that I've found personally useful myself, but if you find a few other abilities that you really like, use whatever gear benefits you most. So by far, the best ability to have for an Octobrush is Damage Up. I recommend having at least two main Damage Up abilities, or six sub damage up abilities. The other ability that really benefits the Octobrush is Swim Speed Up. Most weapons in this game really do benefit from Swim Speed Up, but the Octobrush really makes use of it. I'll talk a little bit about why later, but it's definitely one of the best abilities you can have for an Octobrush. I would recommend having at least one main ability or three sub abilities of Swim Speed Up. Now the next set of abilities that you choose is gonna be preferential based on your playstyle. Personally, I do recommend either Ink Saver Main or Ink Recovery. And I also really like Defense Up myself. A couple other options are Cold Blooded or Quick Respawn. Here's my standard Octobrush gear, and I found it to be quite reliable overall. It features one main Defense Up and two main Attack Ups, as well as six sub-abilities for Swim Speed Up and three sub-abilities for Ink Saver Main. I found this to be a really reliable build, but again, take this with a grain of salt because these will become a personal fit based on what you like. Once you have your gear equipped, it's time to start moving. The Octobrush has two main ways of moving about a stage. One is running and painting, and the other is sweeping and swimming. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. Running and painting is typically your fastest option for movement, and it's great to either rush into the center of the match at the beginning of a game, or to flee opponents if you're in danger. However, you'll notice that after running and painting for a stretch, you'll quickly run out of ink. This is one of the reasons why I recommend Ink Saver Main. Here, I'm trying out my gear with three Ink Saver Main subs, and it doesn't get me much farther, but that little extra distance really does count. Sweeping and swimming has its own set of advantages. It's a little bit slower, but you're covering more turf, which is helpful for your team, and it fills your special quicker. In addition to that, by swimming, you're constantly refilling your ink. Again, this is where an ink saver main can really help you out. Here I've depleted my ink tank, but I'm using my ink saver main while sweeping and swimming. And obviously, because you're swimming, your swim speed up abilities help out a great deal in this instance. Ink recovery can also work. However, here's a test with no ink recovery and no ink saver main. You'll notice as I'm sweeping and swimming, I'm not refilling enough of my ink to keep covering turf. I'm constantly running out of ink, and it leaves me very vulnerable. Although brushes are quick on the ground, Sometimes vertical movement can be a challenge. Many short walls can be easy to paint and climb up. 
However, taller walls, like the ones found on Moray Towers or Flounder Heights, can be a bit more challenging. If you're up against a tall wall, try brushing it on the way down if it's not inked already. When it comes to movement, nets and grates can also be a huge weakness. Because the Octobrush is outranged by almost every weapon in the game, you become quite vulnerable without the ability to swim around or behind the opponent. Maps like Camp Triggerfish and Hammerhead Bridge can be quite difficult to maneuver on for a brush, so before getting on a net or graded area, make sure the coast is clear for you to move on. If you feel comfortable with stage movement, you should focus next on your attack strategy. Typically it will take three hits to splat your opponent, but technically you can splat in two hits. This is where the damage up ability becomes incredibly useful. Kintusei on Reddit has a great write-up about this, and so I'll link it in the description below. But essentially, you can two-shot an opponent with the right distance and the right amount of damage up. Here I've put myself at a perfect distance where I can two-hit without any damage up. Unfortunately, it's not always reliable, so that's where the damage up helps. Check out Kintusei's topic if you're interested in more details, but I found that two main damage ups tends to be the most favorable for getting two hit splats. Having damage up can also help you if you're attacking at a distance. From this far away, not all of the shots will hit as you flick your brush. However, the shots that do hit tend to do around 30 damage. Without any damage up, it's likely that it will take four hits to splat. Well, if you equip one or two main damage ups, you can usually guarantee that three hit. Unlike most weapons in Splatoon that fire in a straight line, the Octobrush creates a radius of attack around it. Because of this, you won't likely want to attack opponents head on. Try swimming around your opponent and attacking them from the side as they fire in front of themselves. Of course, if your opponent expects it, you can be outmaneuvered. Here I have an easy ambush on a tent attack, but rather than going to my left like I expected, he pulls to my right and gets a quick splat on me. Again, with this angle and distance, the octave shot here should be easy for me to take out, but by pulling to my right, he falls out of my radius of attack, leaving me vulnerable. Here's one more clip where my Kraken just ended, and I'm left in a shootout against a gal. Rather than fleeing, I decide to paint a safe spot of ink so I can hide and force the gal to change his angle. When he moves towards me, I jump up and put him in my radius of attack, getting a couple of hits before his wall comes up, thus guaranteeing me the kill. The element of surprise and placing the opponent in your radius of attack are two of the most important skills to have as an Octobrush. To hone these skills, always try to have a height and speed advantage over your opponent. Here I take out one squid with an ambush, and I see another in the corner. He sees me as well, but because I'm able to swim up to him so quickly, I can take him out right away. This is one of the reasons why the swim speed up ability is so vital for an Octobrush. Most weapons in Splatoon benefit in having a height advantage over the opponent but the Octobrush does more so than others. By utilizing its attack radius, you can quickly cover a splat zone or secure a few decent hits while surprising your opponent from above. Overall, the Octobrush is powerful in close range combat, but you can be outranged easily. Use your speed and agility to your advantage to get up close to your opponent. In the right hands, the Octobrush can be a deadly weapon. For a sub-weapon, the Octobrush also comes equipped with beacons. Beacons act as a general assist to your team, letting any one of your teammates warp to a beacon at any time. There are some general tips that are useful to any weapon with beacons, and there is some advice that is more relevant specifically to the Octobrush. Putting your beacons in strategic places is crucial for helping your team. If your team is in the lead, and you have good map coverage, Put your beacons around the middle of the map to help you keep control. However, because the Octobrush is good at quickly getting into enemy territory, 
you can put down strategic beacons to help your team get an ambush. Putting beacons visible to the opponent can also be useful as it distracts them, letting you get a good ambush. If you put your beacons in enemy territory, keep an eye on your gamepad to follow enemy ink trails. If you see someone sneaking up on your beacon, quickly jump to it to get an ambush on them. On this clip I'm respawning, but I'm watching my gamepad. I see that there's enemies drawing near to my beacon. I wait for them to think they've destroyed it and pass it, while quickly jumping and getting an ambush on them. If you jump too soon or too late, you can get caught in the enemy crossfire, so it's important to time your jump just right. This can be countered if your enemy leaves a bomb at the beacon, so be careful as it is a risky move. The Octobrush comes with a Kraken special, which turns you temporarily invincible, destroying anyone who falls in your jump path. Even though you're invincible, doesn't mean you're not vulnerable. Enemies can still slow you down by firing shots at you. If someone does shoot at you, your best option is either to swim around them and cut them off, or super jump back to your base. Some enemies will choose to flee when confronted with a Kraken. Try to swim in such a way that it cuts them off from their escape. Your swim speed ability also affects you while you're a Kraken, so it makes it easier to chase down opponents. Here, rather than going for an opponent directly, I use the Kraken's power to pop the Rainmaker shield, thus getting it out of our base. Later on in the same match, I've got my Kraken ready to go again, but I realize that it's too dangerous to activate it over the nets. I make a decision to take a longer route around the front, and I leave some beacons as I go. Thankfully, my teammate was able to take out somebody on the right, so I have a free in to their base with my Kraken ready to go. It pays off in the end, and we're able to take the lead with that last push. The Kraken is a powerful special, and its ability to press into enemy territory complements the Octobrush well. Unfortunately, it doesn't give the brush any more range, so it still relies on you keeping your enemies close. Okay, so now that we've gone through the individual elements that make the Octobrush unique, I'd like to show you some specific plays that pull from what we've talked about so far. Here, I've jumped to a beacon I had previously set, and I replaced it with another one. I brush the enemy turf and use my height advantage with a Kraken jump to pop the Rainmaker. The Luna Blaster jumps down and I'm able to take him out, but now I'm left vulnerable, so I paint a path back into the corner and super jump back to my spawn. From there, I can super jump back to the original beacon that I had set, and it puts me back right in the game while we take the lead. This next clip is a 4 on 1. I wait for the gal to pass me, then sneak up behind him and take him out while he's not looking. There's an Ingzuka trying to get my spawn, and he's able to use it to pop the Rainmaker. He grabs the Rainmaker, and I'm able to take him out and activate my Kraken which lets me take the upper area with ease. I splat the enemy brush, and I'm also able to get an ambush on the gal, this time from above. Now with the team cleared, I can safely pop the Rainmaker's shield and make a run for it. Here we're in the lead, but I've been able to sneak into the enemy's base. With that advantage, as they respawn, I go in and arc around them, taking out one and then two of them before they're able to get to the zone. A play like this wouldn't be possible without the damage up to get the splat at that distance, as well as the defense up, which keeps me alive long enough to get the second kill. Splatoon offers a number of different game modes, and the Octobrush can be used differently in each mode. Overall, in my opinion, it excels best in Rainmaker, and can hold its own in splat zones depending on the map, it often struggles in tower control, however. In Rainmaker, the Octobrush helps by quickly painting a path for the Rainmaker. And if you stack your swim speed abilities, you can carry the Rainmaker faster yourself. As mentioned before, the spread of ink that the brush puts out can quickly secure a zone. This works best on maps, where you can ink the zones from above, like Blackbelly Skatebark or Moray Towers. Tower control is the most difficult for an Octobrush, because it is challenging for your weapon to attack anyone riding the tower, 
and you become an easy target while riding it yourself. Lastly, the Octobrush does really well in Turf War, being able to spread ink quickly and get splats reliably. Overall, I feel that the Octobrush is a powerful, yet underutilized weapon. It does have a handful of shortcomings, like, for example, not being able to attack at a distance, but it makes up for it in mobility and attack spread. Hopefully this video gives you some tips to either pick up the brush or refine your play, or maybe some better tricks to deal with brushes that give you trouble. Either way, thank you so much for watching this all the way through. I really appreciate it, and if you have any other thoughts or ideas, let me know in the comments. If you're wanting to learn more technical details about the Octobrush, check out Squidboards. There's a lot of great topics on there, including one from Chips, which I'll link in the description. Anyways, until next time, stay fresh.